This is my two month old Uniden 996 P2 scanner and on this video I'm going to attempt to program it for a Motorola Type 1 analog trunking system using the FreeScan software. I'm going to be using a RadioReference.com lookalike uh, data sheet to program my scanner and this data sheet consists of a theoretical county called Magnolia County. It has uh, for a system, it has a Motorola Type 1 trunking system, system voice, it's an analog system. The next piece of information I'll need is the system fleet map, and that's this row right here. I don't know what TT stands for, but these numbers are important, and so I'll be using them. The system frequencies, there's eight frequencies right here, I'll be using all of them. And then down in this area, the system talk groups, these are the actual groups that are using the system. They've got a sheriff's department, a police department, a dog catcher, a emergency ops, a, another police department, and a county bus system. And so in this uh, system talk groups uh, area, I'll be using the subfleet number of all these uh, people here. And also the alpha tag in the description to fill out my alpha tag and description uh, within the scanner. And so this data sheet should supply everything that I need. I always find it easier when working with my scanner to have a plan and a system diagram before I begin. And this happens to be my system diagram. And what I'm doing, I'm configuring the scanner so it can copy the Magnolia County system, which consists of a Motorola Type 1 analog trunking 800 meg band, standard band plan. And so that will be my system box into site one. I'll only have one site. I'll put quick key number one. And from site one, there'll be two groups, group one, group two. Group one will have law enforcement, group two, animal control, bus activity, and medicab activity. And bus group one will have group quick key one, group two, quick key, group quick key number two. The reason I've got two groups here is in case law enforcement starts getting some high activity and I'm uh, being blocked out with the animal control bus and medicab uh, activity, it gives me the ability to turn group two off by toggling group quick, quick key number two and focus strictly on group number one, law enforcement. When I'm done, I toggle quick key number two, bring it back online, and I've got two groups. I can also toggle group one, law enforcement, off if I care to. Here's the opening screen of FreeScan 2.18, which is a software application I'm going to use to configure my Unit in 996 P2 scanner to become a Motorola Type 1 trunking receiver. Uh, the, the program is available from RadioReference.com. It's a no charge, and it can be, it's downloadable. Okay, starting here, the first thing I'm going to do is build a new system right there. I'll click on that. It came up on Motorola 800 Type 1, which is what I'm trying to build, so I'll leave that. And then I'll call it the Magnolia System, named after my theoretical county. Okay, I'll create the system. You'll note that the system comes up, and it also builds a site and a group but uh, initially i'll start off working with the um, the system itself there's not a whole lot to do on configuring the uh, system box and so we're right here on the system box that's this guy right here it's already picked up the name i gave it magnolia system it's got a delay time which i'm going to leave alone there's a there's a clue here it says quick key so if you're setting quick keys, this thing is telling you don't mess around with it here. You'll do it by sight. Okay, and now it knows I'm trying to work with an 800 meg type 1 system. And nothing much there, nothing much there. I like, when I've got all the diagram for the system and all the channels, I like to click this. So when it comes up on the, on the scanner, it comes up in a scan mode rather than a search mode. Although you can change it once it gets there. 
but it's just easier for if you've got all the information already. And probably the final thing you've got to do here is edit the fleet map and clicking on that and you get this screen. As I mentioned before, I'll be picking up some data off the radioreference.com data, uh, data sheet. And this is what I'm interested in right now, the system fleet map. The process of inputting the fleet map information isn't that difficult. It's simply looking at these uh, eight boxes, and that's the eight boxes you, so, you saw when I clicked the fleet map on the scanner software. And you come down to this TT line. I don't know what TT stands for, but you take, for example, this cell, take the 4, move it to B0, the 4 to B1, 4, 4, the 0 to B4, the 0 to B5, 4, and 4. And that's the whole process, and you do it on the scanner software. Here's the fleet map uh, input on the uh, scanner software. There are 16 custom masks you can use that will align, that will set up these numbers. But the system I'm working on is so old it doesn't align to any of them. So I'll build, we're going to build a custom fleet map. And that's using the, the uh, data sheet we saw. This line here is the B0 to B7 information. And this is the, the items that had the, B, the uh, S0 to S4 or whatever it was in it. And so I'm going to manually load those in. Here's the first one. This is B0, and it was a 4. So we'll go there. This is B on and on, on, and on. I, I think I'm not going to say that because I'm going to get confused. So I'm just going to move on here. And there's another 4. And there's another 4. So just like the data sheet shows, I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 4s, 2 zeros, and 2 4s. And that completes that. And I save and apply. Okay, now to configure Site 1. So I'll click on Site 1. Uh, it's already named Site 1. It, it's already got a quick key of 1. I'll leave that as it is. Um, it knows that it's Motorola Type 1, 800 meg. I'm going to leave the modulation on audio, on auto rather. And that's all for, th for that. And the next step is to uh, input the trunk frequencies. As I'm working with a known system, I can pull the frequencies off the radioreference.com data sheet. And they're, they're right down here, system frequencies. Here's eight for my particular system. And I just input them from left to right. I don't even know if there's an, an order to it. I don't think there is. But to me, left to right works just fine. The process of configuring uh, site one for uh, trunk frequencies is simply entering them. In my case, this system has eight frequencies, so I'm going to open up eight entry areas. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I will fill these out. For example, the first one is 856.2000. And nothing goes here, nothing goes there, and nothing there. And I'll just continue to fill these boxes till I reach the end. When I'm through inputting the eight frequencies, the box will look like that. Eight various frequencies. I didn't have to fool with any of this stuff. You might fool with this later on after you got it running and found out you had one really loud channel. You could adjust it up or down. I think that's LTR stuff there. And locking it out is really dicey on a trunking system, so you probably don't want to fool around with that unless you've got some spare time. So that's uh, pr pretty much the configuration on Site 1. Here's a quick refresher of how far I've got on this configuration. Here's the diagram of the uh, Magnolia County system. And I've completed the system portion, this box, which is defining the name, uh, defining the type of system it's going to operate as and defining the fleet map and so I moved on to site one once again defining the name inputting all the trunking frequencies and um, assigning quick key number one and now I'm moving down to group group one which is the law enforcement group where I'll assign 
uh, subfleet identifications as well as the alpha information and we'll assign it a, a quick group quick key of uh, number one configuring group one as you recall when I opened up the free scan when I opened up the system actually it, it built both the site and one group so I'm going to use that group just as it is and I'll select it and it automatically gave it a name of tone group ID group one and I'm just going to leave that as uh, that's clear enough for me you could name it practically anything you want within the limits of the digits here but I'm, I'm going to use that just to make it simple I'm going to assign it quick key number one and then I've got eight different entities to, dis to display here and I'll start by opening up eight, uh, eight lines to do that by clicking on the green cross two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and I'll put the first one in here which is uh, Sheriff one and he's got a tone group of 700-01 uh, I'm not going to do that that I'm not going to do a tone and the only thing I'm going to do is audio type I'm going to hit a and make that analog and I'll do that for all the rest of them here's the law enforcement group uh, TG uh, tone group ID group one with all the user information in place and of course it got named uh, TG ID group one by the computer and I allowed that to stay named it as quick uh, group quick key number one and here we have users sheriff one to ten the alpha police EOC and OCS channels and finally the Lima police these are the tone group IDs that go with each one of these groups and then this was available off the radio uh, reference.com data sheet and the only, only other thing I changed the audio type which was set to all I changed it all to analog because it is an analog system and the theory is it runs faster if you set it correctly so there it is another quick configuration review so far the system is complete site one is complete and group one is complete and now I'm going to create and configure group two for the animal control bus and Medicab and give it a group quick key of two activating group two as you can see right now the the cursor is sitting on the system uh, the Magnolia system I want to build group two in relationship to site one I want it to relate to site the same way that group two does which is also built on site one so to do that I'll click site one I'll go over to new group right there and I'll click that and there's my TGID group two and here's the screen for that and I'll leave it as TGID group two to match with the other one which was group one and I'll give this one a quick key of two rather than the one I gave to uh, TGID uh, group one now to add the users onto group two same thing as group one in this case I have six users six user groups trunk group IDs one two three four five six there's six the first one will be uh, whoops, uh, animal control in and with a TG ID of uh, 700-09 and uh, I'm going to change the audio type once again to analog and the rest of these will be filled out in exactly the same uh, way here's group uh, two with all the user information in it we've got from all the way from animal control down to bus B the various trunking group IDs for those various groups and all the audio types are set to analog and once again it's uh, the group is called TGID group 2 and it's got a quick key of 2 and that pretty well concludes the programming except for the uh, installation into the scanner the upload when I'm working with new configurations like this I like to reset my scanner where it has nothing in it so it's nice and clean to work with and the way you do that and remembering anything you have in there is going to get lost so you need to save it to a file before you do it the way you do that 
you should put a you press nine two nine and hold all at the same time and turn on the scanner and it'll come up talking about memory clear and it'll do that for I don't know 10 15 seconds then it goes blue screen and then the reset and it comes up scan mode nothing to scan because there's no there's no configuration whatsoever in this in this scanner it's empty now for the upload and this, this is really simple over on this uh, portion of the portion of the screen over here it can be on any one of these it doesn't matter is all you're gonna do is you're gonna go up and find this little walkie-talkie with the up arrow and it'll say upload to scanner and you're gonna click on that once and you'll get this send a screen uh, whatever because I've reset my scanner to, to zero I don't care which one of these I use but you do have three choices here depending on how you want to treat your files so I'm just going to go right from here. I've got to check this box, make sure it's checked, and then start the upload. And you can see the data stream going through here. You see information going over here. One system, two groups, 22 channels. I don't know why that did that, but I guess I don't have to know why. At any rate, the uh, information has been loaded up into the scanner. Here is some video of the scanner while it was receiving the upload. And there it goes. Scanner looks like that and it'll actually come up scanning because I got lucky and did it right. And if I'm lucky... M6 to base, go on lunch. And there it is. Check, enjoy your lunch. Here is how this scanner operates once you get it uh, programmed up. It's scanning away, turn the volume down, and it's looking at system one, and it's going back and forth scanning group one and group two. Now if group two comes up and starts rattling away like that, I can get rid of them by hitting, I can get rid of them by hitting function two, you get an asterisk right there, and it's now scanning just the law enforcement side. If I want to get the buses back, it's function two, and the buses are back. It's now scanning both group one and group two, and that's pretty much the uh, the operational side of this thing once it gets programmed. So, okay. happy scanning.